Chapter 4 Broken Gilda stood resolute atop a high plateau overlooking Appaloosa, a day or two trail ride away from Ponyville. The night had overtaken the sleeping western town. Far below, the lights had just started to extinguish from within windows of doorways, of shops, taverns, and homes. The soft blue light of Luna's moon was the only illumination along with the bright stars overhead. However, it was just enough to see the length of the plateau, and to hide the griffin from any curious onlookers who dare to cast an upward glance. The griffin had been waiting impatiently for several minutes now. She eagerly cast a glance in every direction to the skies, finding what she was looking for. Another griffin, clumsily flapping his wings, doing the best he could to level his trajectory. Gilda slapped a talon to her forehead, ashamed that a griffin a year older than her could barely fly. Swiftwing landed on his talons, skidding across the meza before finding his footing. Gilda snorted through her beak. <laughs> you know, you need a new name. Either that or some serious flight lessons. She noted. Swiftwing lowered his head in evident shame, scratching at the back of his neck. The dull gray feathers atop his head hung lazily on either side of his face. His beak was small and feminine, giving him an air of weakness. Regardless of how much teasing Gilda had shown him, she knew Swiftwing was a genius. The male griffin was the smartest creature she had ever met, but also the worst flyer. He was a being not meant for the air like her, but for strategy, planning, and decisiveness. In short, he was perfect for what Gilda had planned for him. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So I have to ask. Swiftwing started, giving her a puzzled look. Asking me to meet you to talk is one thing, but why in Appaloosa of all places? Which question are you asking? Both, I guess. He admitted with a solemn shrug. Appaloosa is as far as I want to go away from Ponyville. It's a whole two days away, and I didn't want to take any risks. I called you here because not only are you the only other griffin I know, but because that big brain of yours, said Gilda. Swiftwing cocked an eyebrow. Our race is going to end discrimination from pony kind, once and for all. And I need your help. The male griffin looked as if he were stifling a laugh which made Gilda's wings flare. Is this about your banishment, Gilda? Don't take it the wrong way, but... This isn't about my banishment. But why it was carried out in the first place? Gilda spat. They're permitting banishment for me from an area for a simple fight. Do you think that those ponies would have done the same to another pony? Of course not. They did this, knowing what would happen to my reputation. Just because I'm a griffin, and I'm not a freaking pony. And don't go thinking that this is just a one-time thing. I spent the last two days researching in Candelot Archives, the history of Equestria. Do you know what I found? I found years of records relating to the fear and discrimination of griffins. Fifty years ago was the War of the Skies. A five-year war between griffins and pony kind. This resulted in the near extinction of our race. And even now, things like my banishment are still occurring. What does that tell you, Swiftwing? The male griffin seemed to chew on that for a moment. He sat down on his haunches, absent-mindedly rolling a pebble between his talons. He looked completely lost in thought, evidently mulling over Gilda's words. She was indeed impatient, but she knew that Swiftwing's help would be imperative to her cause. So she waited, turning away from the griffin to let him think. Well, he started finally, catching her glance. I of course know about the war, but thought that there wasn't any after-effects save the fall of the griffin kind. I never thought that there was still a stigma to our race. But you're right. I guess there still is. Gilda stood, turning away, but stared at her friend, knowing that urging his opinion wouldn't help him make a decision. Say... I want to help you. What exactly did you plan on doing about this? Revolution, said Gilda quietly. 
We gather the remaining griffins from across Equestria, tell them of our cause, and take over the land, town by town. If suitable negotiations don't work, then we retaliate with force. Well, that sounds intriguing, said Swiftwing, scratching his chin. But how do we convince the other griffins? That's why you're here. You're a lot better with words than I am. Not to mention others. I guess I can figure something out. All right. Yeah. You know what? Said Swiftwing. Gilda looked back to him with an expectant look on her face. I'm sick of being treated with such fear and hate. Okay. I'll do it. I'll help you. The sun finally set completely over Sweet Apple Acres, and Applejack was still sitting on the same spot on the hill, taking in the previous week, but mostly the last hour. Rainbow Dash, the farmer's best friend whom she'd known for four years, had, out of absolutely nowhere, told Applejack that she was in love with her. Where had that come from? Dash had never shown any sign whatsoever of liking mares in a romantic way, let alone her. What's so special about me? thought Applejack. Why would she love me? The farm pony let herself fall on her back, gazing at the star-speckled night sky. She heard heavy hoofsteps coming towards her, but didn't need to avert her eyes from the stars to know who it was. Big Macintosh sat next to Applejack a reed hanging between his teeth. You done look good, AJ. Did you fight or something? He asked. Applejack didn't waste any time before answering. She told me she loves me, she breathed. The words unreeled her mind. She said that's why she's been all up all night and why she can't eat or fly right. Rainbow Dash was in the hospital because of me. Now, A.J., said Big Macintosh, I know yo know it's not your fault, and I'm sure that Dash feels the same. Boom. The ground shook as the night sky suddenly flourished with the most recognizable sign in Equestria, a sonic rain boom. The ever-glowing spectrum of light spread horizontally from less than a mile to the east near Rainbow Dash's home. Applejack found herself smiling, tears forming in the corner of her eyes. Well, looks like she's feeling better, said Big Macintosh. Applejack nodded. I sure hope so, because it makes me feel a lot better. Rainbow Dash flew up to her cloud house, gasping for breath as her chest seared in pain. Thankfully, the stitching had held tight, so all that she needed was sleep. Her wings hadn't been used like that in a week, not to mention the fact that she hadn't performed the rain boom in a year. Totally worth it, she panted. From the corner of the living room, Dash heard a familiar sound. She looked around the corner to find Tank with his head lying in his empty food bowl. Rainbow shrieked and darted over to the cupboard, fumbling with her pet's food bag in her mouth, dumping its contents into the bowl. Oh, jeez, Tank, I was so sorry. I should have sent Fluttershy here to feed you while I was gone, said Dash, nuzzling the tortoise affectionately. Tank seemed to give her a small smile before slowly taking a bite of his greens. Rainbow felt terrible for leaving her beloved pet unfed for almost a week. What would she have done if she had found Tank laying in the middle of the floor, dead because of her? After a heart-wrenching week she had just been forced to deal with, there was no way Rainbow could have coped with the death. Dash flinched at the crack of lightning coming from the door. A pegasus was knocking. This thought made her now faint-hearted and sick. It must have been her boss. Who else could it be? There was no way she could have known about the stay in the hospital. And he wasn't a very lenient pony. Rainbow had been threatened with a demotion the next time she took a day off without a doctor's note, which she neglected to retrieve. She hoped to Celestia that the stitching in her chest could be proof enough for she simply didn't have it in her to argue right now, especially after having her heart stomped out. Rainbow Dash waited until the second knock to answer the door, subconsciously hoping the visitor would simply give up after the first try. 
The Scion Pegasus sighed and slowly walked over to the cloud door, opening it with a slight cringe. Rainbow sighed with an immense amount of relief when she saw Fluttershy on the other side of the threshold. When Dash's oldest friend saw her, the yellow Pegasus positively beamed. She bolted forward, wrapping her forelegs around Rainbow's neck. Rainbow Dash, I was so worried, she shrieked. Rainbow could have smiled except for the fact that her wound was screaming in protest in the embrace. Fluttershy, you're hurting me, Dash gasped taking a huge breath once her friend hastily let her go. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know you were injured. Twilight was very vague and about your condition and told us not to visit you yet. But then I saw the sonic rain boom, and I just figured... Let her shy, said Dash flatly, shushing her friend immediately. Come on in. You can freak out inside. The yellow pegasus bit her lip and followed her friend inside as the door was closed behind her. Fluttershy immediately strode over to Tank, saying hello to the tortoise before sitting down on her haunches, watching Rainbow Dash pace back and forth. Dash noticed a pair of saddlebags on her friend's back, but decided that it wasn't important. So, Fluttershy started quietly. Is it all right if I ask you what happened? Well, we were told you had surgery from heart palpitations, but we don't know what caused it. Rainbow processed that for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I did. She said quietly. Dash couldn't tell her about why she started having the attacks. It was simply too painful. She just had her heart broken less than an hour ago, and the wound was still fresh. However, Twilight wasn't the only pony that knew of her secret anymore, but also Applejack. Rainbow had a feeling that the farm pony would eventually confide in some pony. From that standpoint, Rainbow knew that keeping it from her oldest friend was only delaying the inevitable. She sighed, sitting down a few feet from her friend. I guess I should tell you. Oh, you don't have to if you don't want to. You're gonna find out anyway. Rainbow Dash recalled the events of the past week, not pausing for Fluttershy's gasps or looks of shock. She knew that she had spoken as quickly as she could, but to Dash, it still felt like an eternity. She had to push through the barrier of her confession, so the speed of her words was a necessity, not to mention every word seemed to cut into her soul, reflecting upon the rejection. Oh, Rainbow Dash! Fluttershy quivered, Rainbow couldn't say another word after that, but her heart had jumped into her throat, choking her voice. Her friend looked as if she wanted to hug Rainbow, but held her composure. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know. This is bad. This is... Oh, it's in the past, Shy. No, it's not that. It's... Fluttershy started. Something obviously burdened her mind. This caught Dash's attention. What was her friend trying to say? Instead of asking, Rainbow Dash simply strode over and plopped her haunches to the floor, giving her friend a level look. It wasn't angry or menacing, but unnerving. It was a look that Rainbow could only use when Fluttershy was hiding something from her. She had known her friends since they were fillies, and found that it was just the stare. Rainbow also had her own sort of forceful look. Fluttershy cowered under the gaze, visibly shaken. Okay, okay, the yellow pegasus cried out. Please, just stop. Rainbow Dash complied, relaxing a bit after scooting back a foot or two, giving her friend room to breathe. Fluttershy shuddered, shaking her pale pink mane from her head, doing her best to look Dash in the eye. She pulled an envelope from her saddlebags, placing it on the floor between them before covering it with a hoof. Now, before I give this to you, please just know that I wasn't expecting you to tell me that story. I didn't know that you were rejected like that. I was just going to wait until tomorrow after I heard that, but you don't seem to want to wait, she explained in a small voice. She was right. Apparently whatever was in the envelope was going to hurt Rainbow Dash further.
She knew the best way to go about this was to try and draw out of her current uplifted mood by reading it tomorrow. But Dash couldn't wait. She couldn't bring herself to put off any more pain that she knew was inevitable. Rainbow hastily took the letter and read the front of the envelope. It was from the office of the weather department. It wasn't sealed, either. That was weird. It looked as if it was never meant to be kept secret, but merely to hold whatever the letter bore. The, 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 the head of the weather department saw me in Cloudsdale the other day and instructed me to give this to you, said Fluttershy, her voice barely more than a squeak. With that, Rainbow tore the letter out of its envelope and immediately began to read it. Miss Rainbow Dash Time and time again you and I have had our share of rows regarding your attendance. While you have proven yourself to be a magnificent and effective worker, far outclassing any other weather chief in all of Equestria, you have been, for one reason or another, unable to come to work. I have reminded you in the past that the weather team is only as strong as its leader, and recently has been unacceptably weak. I have received word of your sickness at the beginning of the week, only to spot you out and about at Sweet Apple Acres and in Ponyville. Obviously, you do not care of the importance of your position, and this puts me in a difficult spot. For now, I have to find some pony else who will. I take no pride in doing this, but I fear I will have to follow our department policies and terminate your position on the weather team. From the desk of the head of weather. Rainbow Dash read the letter three times before absent-mindedly letting it fall from her hooves onto the cloud floor. H how did this... Why did... She just couldn't believe it. How did this happen? Didn't Dr. Stable send her boss and... Oh, no. She realized. Dash shuddered as she remembered what kept Stable from sending her supervisor a letter of release. The doctor had wiped not only her fee from existence, but also the record of her ever being there. Without any record, the staff of the hospital had no medical reason to send a letter. Suddenly her heart fell from her throat to the pit of her stomach. She just got fired. She was unemployed over something that wasn't even her fault. I, I got the letter two days ago said Fluttershy, her meek voice somehow breaking the silence. But I heard that... I heard that Cloud Kicker already got the position. Rainbow looked up to her friend, familiar tears streaking her face. The yellow mare promptly hugged her again, letting her friend sob into her mane. Nothing was going right, and everything was falling apart. Her entire world was crumbling around her, faster than she could put it back together. Why was this happening? Why did she... What did she do to any pony to deserve this pain? Why was this happening at once? Eventually, Rainbow lifted herself from Fluttershy's caring hold, unable to even speak. Dash stared unfocused at the floor, feeling her entire being tear at the seams. The only good thing about that week had taken her job away from her, as if being grounded for days, having surgery, and having the one she loved reject her wasn't enough. Rainbow couldn't even cry after all these things hit her at once. But she did feel something shatter in her soul. It wasn't her heart. That was already utterly destroyed. But it was just... her. She had shattered. Rainbow Dash was simply broken. Rainbow Dash? She heard the other Pegasus say, heavy with worry. It's gonna be alright. We can find you a new job. Dash said nothing. Dash, please. Nothing. Rainbow was done crying, fed up with trying to be happy anymore. There was simply no point. Applejack watched the night sky as if she were looking for something, only to find Luna's moon shining as brightly as ever. She was walking through downtown Ponyville, dodging glances of the last-minute shoppers and couples enjoying the beautiful night. 
The farm pony was doing her best to keep her path in the shadows, not wanting to run into any pony but Twilight. While the rain boom did lift her spirits and ease the guilt a little, she still needed to talk to the unicorn about what had happened. Not only was she a pony with a head for level advice, but it was evident that the secret she was bearing was Rainbow Dash's feelings. Somehow it just made sense to talk to her rather than any other pony. Applejack had more weight on her shoulders than she ever had back on the farm. She knew that Rainbow Dash's pain wasn't really her fault, but that didn't stop the guilt. Dash was in the hospital because of her feelings for her. She had surgery because of her love. Could they be friends after this? Even if they tried, Applejack could never forget her friend's words. The dream made me realize it's been because I love you. Love. That word rang in her head like a church bell. It was such a powerful word. She had known that. But the farmer had never heard it spoken with any actual meaning behind it. Rainbow Dash spilled her entire heart and soul into that word, but Applejack couldn't accept it. She just rejected it. She rejected Rainbow. Had she spoken too soon? Acted purely on the shock of the declaration of love? No, she thought. I acted on what I am. I'm just not interested in mayors, that's all. The orange earth pony arrived at the front door of the library to find the lights on, shadows playing against the drawn curtains. There was no music, so she dismissed the idea of a party. She wrapped a hoof on the door, awaiting the pony she could hear trotting to the threshold. The door opened to reveal the purple unicorn wearing an exhausted expression. Once she realized who the visitor was, her face brightened. Oh, Applejack, how is... She was interrupted by a sudden bounce of pink curls from the interior of the library. Ooh, ooh, it's Applejack! Squeed Pinkie Pie, bouncing in and out of view behind Twilight's shoulder. Hey, Jack, are you coming in? Applejack turned to whisper to the unicorn. Ah, uh, I wasn't expecting you to have company. Neither was I, Twilight nodded, a dull look on her eyes. It was evident where her exhaustion was coming from. Uh, Twi... Is there any way I could talk to y'all in private lack? Asked Applejack. Well, Rarity and Pinkie Pie are here right now, and Fluttershy will be right back, said the unicorn. They're all really eager to hear about Rainbow. That struck a pang of guilt in her heart. It's all right, Twi. She told me. Y'all don't have to keep her secret from me. Twilight raised an eyebrow, giving her a look that said, and I just before Applejack could finish her sentence, Pinkie Pie had squeezed between Twilight and the door frame, shoving the two aside. What are you waiting for? Fluttershy's gonna be back to tell us if Dash is okay, she said, shoving the two ponies with unexpected ease. Applejack felt herself tense up like a board, forcing the pink mare to fall forward onto the floor face first. What what? She stammered as Pinkie Pie recovered and closed the door. Well, we all wanted to know if she was all right, said Rarity in a matter-of-fact way. And Fluttershy volunteered to go check up on her, being a Pegasus and all. Yeah, did you see the Sonic Rainbow? asked Pinkie. We figured that she was doing better, so Fluttershy went to go see her. Applejack felt her eyes widen. None of them knew Rainbow's secret, except for Twilight. Would she tell Fluttershy? For some reason, she didn't feel comfortable with all her friends knowing about the event. It just seemed... private. Applejack felt as if she could only talk to Twilight, considering she already knew. But then again, they all were close friends. It couldn't be a total disaster. The Orange Earth Pony merely found a seat at the table in the kitchen, slumping into it. Twilight followed her, thankful that Pinkie Pie and Rarity found something to distract themselves. Applejack leaned on her elbows, letting her hat fall over her face. "'So how are you doing?' asked Twilight as she sat next to her friend. "'Guilty,' she answered. "'Terrible and guilty.' 
Why is that? I don't know. It's stupid, really. I just feel like it's my fault that Dash is in such bad old shape. I know there's nothing I could do, but I still feel bad. It's not stupid, said Twilight softly. It's understandable. Thankfully you do indeed. Thankfully you do indeed understand that it's not your fault. It sounds like you just need closure. Applejack cocked an eyebrow at the unicorn. Closure? Yes, in one form or another. Twilight started. I think that once Rainbow has some time to mull over, and you can just talk to her. But I need to know. Do you like her? You know, that way? The farm pony found herself hesitating before replying. No, I don't exactly approve of the idea of two mares getting along like that. I'm an old-fashioned pony, from old-fashioned family. I mean, sure, I can understand why some pony could find Dash attractive, but other than that... Twilight raised her eyebrows. So you don't approve of Rainbow Dash, then? What? Well, of course I approve. I, no, I, I don't... I, I don't know, I guess. Applejack sputtered, burying her face into her hooves, not knowing what to think any more. What did she think of Rainbow Dash? She couldn't be blamed for her lifestyle. If she liked mares, then so be it. Even if Applejack couldn't see it, it wasn't really her place to pass judgment. Applejack sighed, covering her head with her Stetson. Somewhere behind them, the window opened and Applejack spun around, finding that she was hoping for a certain Pegasus to appear. However, it was Fluttershy, looking levels beyond crestfallen. It was as if the yellow Pegasus didn't know whether to feel sad, shocked, or frightened. Every pony gathered around her, sputtering with anxious questions. Applejack merely remained on her seat, but facing her friends. Fluttershy didn't speak. "'Well, come on, darling, what happened?' asked Rarity, impatience laced in her voice. "'Don't keep us waiting all night!' "'Oh, um, I—' she whispered. "'She's really—it's not good.' Silence followed as every pony held their breath, with Applejack on the edge of her seat. "'She—she she just got home. "'She—she she just got home and found out that she... Rainbow Dash just lost her job. Applejack's heart sank. She didn't care that her jaw was hanging. Rainbow lost her job? How? The farmer couldn't believe it. What else could go wrong in that poor Pegasus' life? Now it felt indefinite to Applejack. It was her fault. All her fault. Her best friend's life was falling apart because of her. She's in really bad shape. She's been through way too much this week, and now she doesn't have a job. Rainbow won't say anything. She won't respond to anything I see her do. It's just like she stopped caring about everything. Rarity placed a hoof over her mouth. Pinkie Pie sniffed a tear rolling down her face. Twilight was staring at the floor, seemingly pained to knowing what was going on, but unable to say anything. Applejack just... she just couldn't believe it. What had she done? Rainbow Dash really needs our help. I just don't know what to do, Fluttershy concluded. I do, came Twilight's voice hoarse but strong. She turned her head to Applejack, a look of determination on her face. And I think you do, too. Suddenly, all eyes were switching between the two ponies. What do you mean, dear? How does Applejack know what's going on? Rarity demanded. I can't do that, Twa! Applejack said slowly. I'm not asking you to feign any feelings. Just talk to her. 
What if she has another fit? What do I do then? You're the only one who can help her. No, I'm only gonna hurt her more. Stop it! Yelled Fluttershy out of nowhere. Suddenly, every pony jumped in place, their eyes wide on the yellow mare. Applejack and Twilight immediately softened once they saw the tear streaks on her face. She was sobbing quietly as Rarity placed a hoof on her shoulder. Applejack, please. You're the only pony she'll listen to right now. Rainbow Dash loves you. She's losing herself because she loves you so much. Everything in her world is falling apart. I'm afraid what she's going to do next. Do you know how afraid I am to leave her alone right now? Rarity and Pinkie Pie recoiled, absolute shock upon their faces. Now all eyes were on Applejack, who couldn't hold back her own tears any more. The farm pony hid her face behind her Stetson as she quietly sobbed. Soon she felt three pairs of forelegs wrapped around her, warm and comforting. What do I do? I just got through rejecting her. I, I don't want to hurt her more. I can't take it, girls. I just can't take that. And neither can she. I know, Applejack, came Twilight's soft voice. But if you don't talk to her now, who knows what she'll do? Dash is in a desperate condition, and you're the only one who can help her. You don't have to love her. Just be there for her. Applejack sniffed, closing the valve to her tears. She lowered her hat as Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity let go of her. The farm pony simply stared at Twilight, wishing that she had all the answers. What would she ever say to Rainbow? I'm sorry for your love for me, but tough cookies? She just didn't know what to do. Do you really think she'd actually do something drastic? Applejack asked Fluttershy desperately. To her horror, the yellow mare said nothing, but simply stared at her. She wouldn't kill herself, Fluttershy. I know she's desperate, but she wouldn't. The words grew tighter in her throat as Fluttershy continued her silence. If Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash's oldest friend, who clearly knew her, didn't know what she would do then. No. Applejack couldn't sit there any more. She leaped to her feet in a sudden anxiety. Twilight, get that cloud walking spell of yours going. After that, I want you girls to wait on the Rainbow's house while I get my lasso. I want to make sure she doesn't do nothing stupid. Applejack ordered. Twilight immediately zipped off to the bookshelf, searching for whatever book held the spell she needed. The farmer went on speaking again, only to be interrupted by the door opening upstairs, followed by a sleepy-eyed baby dragon descending the stairs. Spike rubbed sleep from his eyes, clutching a scroll with a familiar red ribbon tied together. Hey, girls, he yawned wearily. Is Twilight down here? I got a letter from the princess. Twilight couldn't have entered the room fast enough. She had found the book she was looking for, which was now in her mouth. The unicorn spat out the text, her eyes wide on the scroll. A letter from the princess? Now? She stammered. Spike, tell her I'm sorry, but I can't take her letters right now. This is the third one she sent in five minutes. Spike replied with an air of worry. I had to have a coughing fit before I could come downstairs. Whatever she trying to tell you, I guess it's important. I'm sorry, Spike, but Rainbow Dash is in danger, replied Twilight. Applejack was amazed. Was she really refusing an urgent letter from Princess Celestia? It was an odd sight to take in, but it was understandable. Danger? What happened? asked the baby dragon worriedly. No time, Twilight exclaimed. Turning to Applejack, she flipped through the tomb from the library. She immediately found the spell and wasted no time in casting it. A violet glow erupted from the unicorn's horn, and instantly Applejack felt her hooves tingle, feeling lighter and somehow softer. Once she recognized that the spell was complete, she rushed out the door into the cool night air towards Sweet Apple Acres. Her friends not too far behind...
Hold on, Rainbow Dash. I'm a coming. Just don't worry, that pretty little head of yours. Descends, Chapter 4.